there's a lot of things that the cow calf producers already do uh, to that relate to bio, biosecurity, and um, I mean, doing a good job of those things is probably a good place to start. The Beef Research School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. So biosecurity is just a fancy name for all the things we do to try to prevent uh, the introduction of infectious diseases onto our farms and uh, it involves everything from having a good vaccination program which you need to set up with your veterinarian to, to vaccinate your animals to protect against various things and it also involves sort of how you source animals and bring animals onto your farm. The ultimate biosecurity is a closed herd, which almost never happens in the beef industry. Uh, we almost always buy bulls or occasionally replacement heifers or something like that to bring them onto our farm. So it's important to buy those from a known source where you know that the health is good and they have good vaccination programs and things like that. If you do have to buy from unknown sources, it's probably good to, uh, to uh, either do some testing in consultation with your veterinarian or at least uh, isolate those animals for a short period of time when they get to your farm uh, so that you don't introduce disease to, to the rest of the herd. One of the big risk factors is buying baby calves at an auction market and probably something you want to avoid at, uh, wherever possible because a lot of those calves have various infections like bovine virus diarrhea and uh, salmonella, etc. that can be brought onto your herd and, and create havoc uh, in your own herd if you bring it on at the wrong time. So the main thing is to make sure you know your source of your cattle, make sure that it's coming from a healthy source, try to avoid bringing in too many sources at once uh, if at all possible. Some of the other issues around biosecurity would, would involve uh, visitors to the herd and, and things like that and preventing the introduction of diseases from other countries. Uh, certainly we worry about those things and, and talk about uh, uh, minimizing visitors or having them wash their boots or cleaning trucks. Uh, and probably a more important part of biosecurity would just be making sure you don't use the same machinery to clean pens and to feed cattle with. And, and uh, uh, the old rule we learned in kindergarten, separating your poop from your food, is a pretty important one even for animals too. And, uh, we can employ a number of biosecurity techniques to, to decrease the, the infection. In that disease, the cows are actually carrying a lot of the viruses and bacteria that can cause calf diarrhea. So we really want to reduce the calf's exposure to cow manure. So we can do that in a number of ways. We can spread the herd out as much as possible at calving time. Uh, probably most importantly, we can have a separate wintering area for the cows before calving, move them onto the calving area just a few weeks before calving uh, so that we don't build up contamination on the calving area at that time. Uh, again, the same principles of biosecurity apply that if you get a calf with diarrhea, you want to remove it from the rest of the herd so it's not infecting other animals. Uh, and uh, you want to avoid introductions at that time period that are it's really a high risk time period where you've got a lot of young animals that are at risk of infectious disease. Uh, you don't want to bring new calves in from, from other sources at that time of year. Um, the word biosecurity is kind of a new, a new term, I guess, for, for some things that we already do. There's a lot of things that the cow-calf producers already do uh, to, that relate to bio, biosecurity. And um, I mean, doing a good job of those things is probably a good place to start. So things like uh, vaccinations, um, making sure you got a good vaccination schedule and, and uh, program going when you're buying and selling, uh, when, mostly when you're buying stock, to make sure that the stock that you're buying has been vaccinated and that they followed those protocols. And um, just avoiding buying things like uh, uh, used bulls or secondhand bulls that uh, you might not know the history of. Uh, those, are, those are things that might turn into problems for you later. Uh, dead stock's kind of a tricky one and we all have to deal with them uh, when they occur. Um, 
you know, burying dead stock is a common practice, and I think that's a that's a good start. Um, you know, we often get busy, and sometimes it's hard to, to to bury them. And there's some really interesting programs going on now in southern Alberta, um, where they have uh, pickup programs and and uh, specialized bins and and uh, hopefully our industry may be able to take advantage of those types of opportunities more in the future. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we're certainly not the pork industry or the chicken industry, um, you know, where, the, where they have those very, um, very stringent uh, biosecurity protocols, you know, to the extent of putting, I don't think you're going to see a lot of uh, ranchers walking around with uh, plastic booties on their, their feet. Um, but just some of those basic things that we talked about, you know, good, good vaccinations. Um, if you're getting into a community pasture situation, you want to make sure your animals are, are, uh, are coming from a known breeder, a reputable breeder, and um, that you're really careful about, about things like your vaccination schedule, for example.